The drive of the xenomorph lies within its ability to aid the survival of the species. As seen on Hadley's Hope, the aliens quickly and systematically captured and cocooned colonists as their queen laid eggs, and within a mere few days, a hive of over a hundred aliens was thriving. The single alien aboard the Nostromo secreted its own makings for a hive in the hold of the ship, with Brett and Captain Dallas cocooned to the wall, enduring a process that seems to be morphing them into xenomorph eggs. The alien on the prison planet of Furina Fury 161, however, is notably different. Born of a four-legged animal, the resulting xenomorph was much more ravenous, and due to sharing traits with its host, more animal-like. While other xenomorphs have been seen violently attacking their prey if seen as a threat, the priority would be to capture and to harvest. Fury's alien possibly lacks that focus and slaughters every prisoner on the planet, usually leaving little question as to whether they still may be alive to serve as a potential host. This alien was very much aware that a queen xenomorph was on its way, gestating inside Ripley, confirmed through some kind of sensory verification when in close contact with her. Ripley herself acknowledges that the alien won't kill her because it won't destroy its, quote, future. With the queen on its way and several humans available to harvest, why didn't the alien on Fury 161 create a hive? Well, those familiar with Alien 3's production and the constant changes to the script won't be surprised to hear that a hive on Fury 161 was once part of the story. But what may be surprising is just how close it was to actually making it into the final movie. Earlier in the year, Alec Gillis shared some previously unseen photos of Studio ADI's work for the scene on his Instagram account. He confirmed that, for a brief moment on Alien 3, there were cocooned humans. Gillis shared images of sculptures they are working on for this mysterious sequence, and we can see the development of cocoons very similar in aesthetic to the previous two films. Gillis goes on to explain that unfortunately the cocoons never went past the sculpture phase, and they were cut from the film. So we can gather that it was a significant enough scene to start these preparations, but fell victim to the constant last minute changes in the production. You may also remember the video game adaptation of Alien 3. One of the key elements of the game as the player controls Ripley is to search Fury 161 for cocooned prisoners and free them, while the ultimate goal is to destroy a flourishing alien hive. An unusual goal, seeing as how it doesn't appear in the movie, which isn't to say the Alien 3 game is especially accurate to what we see in the actual movie. There's the cocooned prisoners aspect, of course, there's even a fully grown queen, and completely contrary to the film, Ripley is armed to the teeth, gunning down hordes of aliens with her pulse rifle, flamethrower, and grenade launcher. But hey, it's a video game in the 90s, what are you gonna do? It is worth noting, though, that the game's pretty accurate in terms of its design when it comes to the locations of Fury 161, and the design of Ripley. It all looks pretty close to what we see in the movie, in a 32-bit version, of course, and for the time, it's actually pretty impressive. But the point is, the developers of this game must have had at least some insight into the movie so they could make the game, and likely whatever reference they had was sent directly from the studio, maybe condensed treatment of the general plot points and general concept art, what have you. So this cocoon sequence must have been, at least at some stage of the production, a pretty significant moment. At least enough to survive in the form of the video game and reach preparations for the sequence's key special effects work from Studio ADI. So what was the sequence supposed to be? It's likely they were meant to be included in an earlier version of the script which gives us a much different conclusion to Gallic's story, leaving him cocooned after he frees the beast from captivity. He's left surrounded by dead bodies, babbling to himself, repeating, I'm sorry sir, likely addressing the dragon. He's discovered by Ripley, Aaron, Dylan, and Morse in the abattoir. There's a nice moment where Ripley notices Babe, the ox, lying dead with its chest burst open, and she ominously states, This is where it started. I think it's a good scene, and an interesting concept, and also I think it's a good end for the Gallic character, but the only issue is that in this version of the script, the scene doesn't really go anywhere. They simply leave Gallic where he is, and continue on with their plan to stop the alien. Maybe if they took a flamethrower to him in a similar way we eventually saw in the director's cut of Alien with Dallas, it may have been an appropriate death. But it's also possible the cocoon sequence was meant to follow the events of an even earlier version of the script, in which Dylan and Morse discover a large hive protected by what's described as a cross-section of laser light, calling back to the blue laser over the eggs in the derelict ship from the first film. The pair discover too late that penetrating this field acts as an alarm to warn the alien. 
They discover Andrews, among others, cocooned and encrusted in alien mucus in the meat locker. Andrews is still alive, begging to be put out of his misery, and Dylan sets the cocoon chamber ablaze with a torch. The alien appears, and Dylan is actually able to fend it off, scaring it away with his torch. None of these versions of the scene made it into the film, and what we're left with is a reminder of what could have been. Though we don't see it in the film, do you think the alien on Fury 161 was preparing a hive for the new queen? Off screen, perhaps? Though it doesn't seem to have the same knack for leaving victims alive as the previous aliens had, likely due to its host being an animal, and maybe this incarnation of the xenomorph just lacked impulse controls and couldn't resist tearing victims apart, though it at least had the good sense to keep Ripley alive. Given how close we actually came to seeing this cocoon sequence, it can at least be assumed that this alien was conceived with the ability to create a hive in mind. Would you have liked to have seen a cocoon sequence in Alien 3? Which of the two versions mentioned do you prefer? Comment below and share your thoughts. And as always, I'd like to thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a like, and you can also subscribe for all the latest videos from the channel. A very, very special thanks goes out to Wailing Dutani Executives, Emyurk, and Lady Anne, part of the Patreon Hive. If you'd like to join the Hive and support the channel, check out my Patreon page for exclusive posts and contests. In the meantime, you can catch up with Alien Theory over social media. Follow at Alien underscore Theory on Twitter and at Alien Theory YT on Facebook and Instagram for more. And until next time, this is Alien Theory, signing off.